Hi everyone, Lisa here, aka Maggie Milo, and I'm here to share the process video uh, for my alpha challenge. And um, usually I do uh, my challenges with Sandra, who is OSNAP Gonzo, but she's on holidays this weekend, and uh, I was feeling a little bored, and I felt like I needed to have a little bit of a creative push. So I came up with this challenge, and feel free to participate, and you can uh, either link your video, like leave a video response to this showing uh, layout that you made, or you can um, leave or just make a uh, picture in your Facebook page and then just uh, tag me, which is Maggie uh, Milo, and uh, then I'll be able to see your uh, pictures that you made or layouts that you made. So here you can kind of see and I'm just really jumping fast forwarding quite a bit here because it's kind of a tedious thing at this point but basically all I'm doing is making a huge collage of these alphas and they're going to be peeled off um, later but um, I'm using them as a mask for right now. So I'm just taking all the different alphas and you can kind of see me working through through each one and then I'll put a couple down and then I'll fast forward so you can kind of see um, what it looks like after I've added them and basically what I was doing was um, I was taking some of the bigger alphas putting those down and then putting um, kind of the medium sized ones down and then some smaller ones and then I jump back into some bigger ones just to try and fill in some gaps so that was kind of where I was going with this and then um, I was just using the really, really tiny, um, I don't know if they're basic gray or studio calico uh, stickers, um, but they're super, super tiny ones. And I was using those uh, to kind of um, bridge any of the little gaps that I had. So you can kind of see me um, using some of them right now. Those are those little red ones. So again, it's just a lot of filling gaps, but I just thought you guys would maybe like to see the process as it goes on. Um, and then just like I said, just kind of filling in gaps. I was trying to leave somewhat similar gaps all the way around, um, you know, the letters so that they kind of look like they should belong together. And actually, if you look at this right now, I could really use this as a background layout. I really like how that looks even before I missed it. And I'm using the Buttercup Mist by Mr. Uh, Mr. Hueys. And before I misted it, I actually debated on just using the background just the way it was. And I think I might do that for a uh, future uh, scrap your stash, or uh, sorry, not scrap your stash, Saturday stash dive. I'm sorry. So I might do that on a future uh, episode. So I have to watch for that. So here I just fast forwarded through a lot of the tedious. Um, pulling the letters off and some of them stuck and kind of ripped the paper up a bit but I was okay with that because um, it gave it a it gave it a little bit of texture and because it's a boy layout I didn't want it to be you know overly clean but I really like how um, this all turned out some of this of these alpha stickers they left a little bit of a sticky residue on it so I did this little test sample in the corner to see if this glitter would um, stick to it and it does so this is black diamond um, dry stickles by Ranger and uh, I think it's a Tim Holtz pro product I'm not 100% sure it could be just a Ranger product but um, I really like how it just gave it kind of a dirty kind of grungy kind of look to it so and it gave it a little bit of glitter but not too much um, the black glitter has very very little shine to it just has a little bit here and there and then I dump the excess off and then here I'm just gonna rub it around just to make sure I've got it completely rubbed into those sticky parts so that way um, it was fully covered so you're gonna just kinda see me do that here and then I'm just moving it down into the corner over here and then I'm gonna do it on the other side and that way you just make sure you get everything completely coated and your page is going to be full of glitter. So what I do is I take a dry paintbrush and I just wipe it off. And I'm okay if I wipe off um, some of the extra from uh, the page. It's okay because I'm looking for a grungy, dirty look anyway. So I just did that. And then I'm going to cut 
down um, this page to 11 and a half by 11 and a half so I can mat it on a 12 by 12 a black piece of cardstock. Just wanted that uh, really thin black border all the way around um, just to add a bit of an accent and especially because this page, this pattern paper that I've made is really busy. It just kind of um, frames it in a way so that it's not kind of running off the page so to speak. And then here I'm pulling out the pattern papers and trying to see um, what I want to use as my layout. Now because this is a picture of my son, um, which you may or may not see in a second here, um, I don't want to use a lot of pink um, because it, I'm just worried that it's going to get a little too girly. Um, one thing with neon is it can get really girly quite quickly and I didn't want to kind of go that way. So um, I took this black chevron and I'm going to add that. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of look for little strips. And then there was like this border strip that had this blue kind of um, doily on it. But I'm more or less using that for a pattern. It's going to get covered up. So I'm not really going to be using it as a doily piece because then that would really, really girl it up. And then I'm going to use this paisley paper as a mat for my photo. And this picture is about my son in grade 6. They had um, a stomp recital. Um, I'm not sure if everybody knows what stomp is, but it's where they make um, music with... Um, you know, garbage cans or garbage lids or sticks or, um, you know, different objects other than mus musical instruments. And so I was actually pulling off a whole bunch of pictures from my iPhone and I was printing them off because my iPhone is full. I don't have any room to do anything else on my iPhone. So I just wanted to print off a whole bunch of pictures and I found this one in like kind of felt it went along with the neons because um, on his shirt they have like this kind of neon um, tape on him uh, because everything was done in the dark and uh, with kind of uh, a black light so that everything would kind of show up with, um, with that glow in the dark kind of effect. So I wanted to use neons in this and uh, the sketchbook paper seemed to match really, really well with neons because they're so bright and uh, powerful that it really felt like it went to, uh, went with this layout. And then there was this border strip um, on the bottom of one of the sketchbook papers, and it had this kind of like tie-dye neon look to it. So I'm going to use that um, as a border as well. And I'm just trying to find something else to layer under that photo. And I pull out that yellow pattern, but it, I'm going to end up trimming it down just because it's a little too uh, big. And you can see I just flipped it around just to see if I like the other side better. And it kind of clashed with the background because it was a little bit of a gray or blue um, on the background and it just didn't really feel like it went very well so um, here I'm just checking to see if I want to use this other pattern and again it just didn't really feel like it went very well so here you can see I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a measuring with my eye and I'm just going to trim off that little bit of the excess and then um, when I lay it down, there's just a little bit of a hint of the pink popping through. Um, again, I didn't want to girl it up a little too much. I was scared of using pinks. Um, so, and then again, up at the top, I've got that pink chevron. But if I dull it down with this blue, it kind of um, does make it a little less girly. And then here, I'm just going to cut out some of these cameras. And that's for the sketchbook line as well. So just trimming that out and I'm going to take another camera and I'm going to put it right where that yellow one is right now because 
um, the yellow kind of clashes with that orange that's there. So I'm going to use the blue one there instead that I'm cutting out right now. And just kind of put, I'm going to put that yellow one up at the top so um, there's a place for embellishment up at the top. And then that way it balances out. I debated on um, doing a little bit of a narrower um, of that chevron at the bottom. Uh, but I opted against it. Um, I kind of think now I probably should in, in light of the way that the layout went. But you know what? It, when I, I like the way this layout turned out anyway. But I kind of wish I would have made it a little bit shorter. Just to let a little bit more of that pattern on the background show up. And I'm inking everything up in black soot ink uh, because uh, there is so much pattern going on here. I wanted to make sure I could define uh, the edges of each of those uh, pattern papers um, just so that they had a little bit of definition between each of the layers. Otherwise, they kind of get a little lost, um, especially when it's a very, very bright and busy background like that. You almost need a place uh, for your eye to rest between them. So um, that's why I ink them up in the black soot ink. And just going to lay down that border strip there. And then I'm going to ink up these layers. And then just going to ink up around the photo mat too because it um, just needed a little bit of uh, the black as well. And then here I'm just going to glue everything down. Just fuss with the picture a little bit. And then I'm going to get out some washi tape. And I start off with this yellow one, but it's just... Um, it's yellow on yellow and it doesn't look quite right. It's just not, it needs, it needed to have a different color to work with it. And there was pink and there was yellow there. So I opted for this neon green. And I didn't have a neon blue. I wish I had a neon blue washi tape that, um, you know, I could have layered it over top because then I could have mimicked um, the look of uh, the layering on that border strip underneath the photo. And just inking up those layers now. And that speech bubble is from that Ready, Set, Go paper. And I just wanted to add um, something in at the top there where I could just do a little bit of journaling. And glue that blue strip down. And then I'm going to pull in some orange washi tape, and then this is um, going to go underneath that camera just to add a little bit of accent to it. And then I'm going to kind of mimic the same idea up in that top cluster, just add some um, orange and green washi tape. Just kind of pull everything together. And then, then you can see how that makes it fit in with the, kind of the layering that's going on in that border strip. Just going to cut the top part of that off. And I'm not sure what I'm doing right now. I think I'm debating on what to do for my title. Oh, I pulled... I was going to use these and then I wasn't really sure how I could make them work. So I put them aside and my camera did cut out towards the end, um, but I did end up using some of those pieces. So um, you'll have to stay tuned for the close-ups when to see that. And here I'm taking some of these remark stickers and I was just putting them over top of this black and white chevron just to make sure I could see them and I couldn't. So now I wasn't sure what I was going to do for my title uh, because I wanted to do, um, you know, a couple different layers of the uh, neon ink on these mistables. So I had to think about that for a minute. So what I did is I actually took these mistable thickers and I put them on this, um, uh, what do you call it? This is the nonstick mat from Tim Holtz, and this is the smaller one. 
and I'm just putting everything, all my titling down, and then I'm going to take my neon ink and I'm going to smush it over top. And I'll just kind of move everything down just so I can make sure that um, the inks don't uh, mix in with each other. So that's the green. And you can see it's got a white edge around it. So you can notice I have my water brush out. So I'll show you what I do in a little bit here. But basically all I'm doing right now is just making, I'm smooshing the ink on as best as I can. So I use the pink, the orange, the blue, and the green. So then I'm going to take my water brush and I'm just going to smooth out that ink and then that'll get rid of all that white line. So you're going to see in a second here, I'm going to fast forward and you're going to see it all done, I think. And it was very fast, but anyway, it's pushed over to the side and it's done. Um, I'm don't, not sure if you can see it really all that well, but a lot of the white um, has now um, kind of been saturated uh, with that um, ink because I used my watercolor brush, so it just kind of um, made that ink smooth right into all of the areas of the, of the letter. And here I'm taking these uh, big dots, and they're, they look kind of neon. I don't know if they are neon, um, but they look kind of neon when you put them on this page. So um, I'm just kind of laying them down and making it kind of look like a little bit of a bokeh effect. I don't know where else I would maybe use these, but... Um, I like how this part turned out. I'm just mixing it between the um, smaller ones and the bigger ones. And I'm just going to carry it on down to the bottom of the photo there. So it kind of draws your eye across. And here I'm going to the stamp set. And I'm going to take this border piece that's like a whole bunch of little tiny arrows. And I'm going to use that to um, stamp along the bottom side of the photo. And I think I used the green ink or the blue. Maybe I used the blue. Yes, I used the blue one. And I was just trying to see where else I could add the stamp just to kind of make it fit in. Um, so I was going to add it up at the top here, but I just didn't want it to run over top of that speech bubble. So I'm just going to mask it off with a post -e note and then just um, add about three of those little triangles to the bottom of that cluster there. Or to the side, I guess. And I think now I'm kind of figuring out what to do uh, for my title, where to place it. And um, it dawned on me that I had these from Sandra. She sent them to me in a rack, and they're these little file folders. And they're actually like neat. I don't know if they're neon colors, but they're really, really bright. And they went with all the colors that I had. Um, so I was going to use these um, to put my title down. And so I just opened the file folder up so it looked like a really super long file folder. And um, here I was just going to pull out those G and I pulled it in a couple different colors to see which uh, one would look the best on this background. Um, and I opted for the pink one if I remember right just so it stood out a bit better. And because I don't use um, G's very often, I was okay if they got wrecked, so that way, you know, I could just, um, you know, it wasn't like I used an E or an A where I would use it all the time. I just used one other letter that, you know, I know I wouldn't use, like I, you could have used a Z. Z's aren't very common, uh, very common um, from anything that I put down. They might be common for you, but they're not common for me. 
So here I'm just going to start spelling out stop and I'm not sticking it down completely um, because I know I'm going to probably have to move it around. And I'm just going to start putting down all my letters and I did actually end up drying these off a bit because they were still a little wet. So I used my heat gun to uh, dry them quite a bit. And then here you're going to see me um, finish the title here really quickly. Just finishing that up. And then I'm going to start putting down the word stop. Uh, but I had to, I'm going to jump fast forward a little bit here because I didn't get the placement quite right the first time. Um, so I had to muck around with it. My M was getting a little bit um, ripped. So um, I just fast forwarded a little bit there because I was getting a little frustrated with it. And then I'm kind of thinking that I have some awkward spots. So I'm going to um, try and find something that can fill in those awkward gaps in the title. Oh, actually here I do this part first. Um, it looked like there, the file folder was a little weird. Um, just kind of felt like it was floating and there was nothing to it. So I actually cut off the bits of like the top little like file part of uh, that paper and I'm just gonna you know glue that down and then that will look like there's a whole bunch of file folders behind there. And I'm going to take a blue one next. And instead of putting this one on the back side, you're going to see I'm going to put it on the front just because it looked a little weird um, in the back. So I'm going to stick it in between the green and the orange one. That way it gives it a little bit of dimension to it. And then here's a little happy face sticker, or sticker, stamp, that was on that stamp set. And I'm going to use some Versa Fine ink because I wanted it to be a really, really um, strong black image. Just so it would stand out from all the bright colors that were going on. Because there's a lot, a lot of bright, bright colors and it, it kind of gets a little hard for your eye to... Um, focus on something. So if you use some black ink, it'll really kind of ground everything. And this was a light bulb from that other stamp set that I was debating on using. I just thought that would go kind of well with <clears throat> um, the title because it was in the dark. And here I'm just going to add some foam dots to the camera and I'm going to stick those each of those cameras down with foam dots. And sticking that yellow one down. And I just gave it a tap just to make sure that there was everything was attached in place. And here you can kind of see I have my craft mat out again. And I'm going to add some ink splatters with this ink. And this is the Pipped Raspberry um, Distress Paint. And I kind of think I maybe should have stopped here. Um, but I wanted to try and add some ink splatters to it. And... It kind of gave it a little bit more of a painted effect, um, like, not painted effect, but splatter effect. Um, so anyway, um, it was definitely interesting. But, um, and then there I'm adding the blue, which is Salty Ocean. And then the last one is mowed lawn. And all I'm doing is just spraying enough water to kind of make it a water-like, not an over-water-like consistency, but just enough so that you can splatter it. And I guess the reason why I added the paint is because it kind of reminded me of Stomp because they do kind of use paint as well. So here are the close-ups. You can see I added some of those 
uh, black and white polka dot elements. And then that just kind of gives you a little bit of a better look at that splatter. And stay tuned for the close-ups. Thanks everybody for watching. Bye.